Do you notice anything unusual about these beautiful waves in the ocean? What about this Tuscan village looking pretty in the sunset? If you don't see it yet, try squinting your eyes a bit and uh, while you do that I will make the picture a bit smaller. And now, hopefully, you will see a familiar logo. These pictures are created with the open source AI image creation tool Stable Diffusion. But to be able to do these cookie cutter shapes, you also need an add-on called ControlNet. And uh, pictures like these ones, do you see it? Love? <laughs> have been floating around a lot on the internet in the last few weeks and I became very curious about this. I thought that this was a very interesting advancement in AI image creation. Before this we have been able to instruct the AI to create a photo, for example of a Tuscan village in the sunset. But we haven't been able to be more precise in the shape that we wanted to take. For example here someone made an interesting image with a whirl. Do you say that? Like a spiral? <laughs> and it looks pretty cool and here someone made it with a checkerboard. Also very cool. And what amazes me with these photos is that apparently the AI can be very creative and in many cases with the control net images I would say it is more creative than the average human and even more creative than a very creative human. For example look at these hedges. I instructed it to make a photo with hedges in a garden and make it look like the McDonald's logo. And notice how creative it is with placing the bushes like this or the small trees. Very interesting. And what's even more amazing about these images is that you can create them yourself on a regular laptop without too much hassle. And I will show you how to do it, how I did it. But first let's just look at some more quick examples. Because I think there are so many cool examples of how to use this. This image, I saw it floating around on Twitter. Do you see the text? Squint your eyes, <laughs> consume. And here, these people standing in the rain. If you squint your eyes, you will see a word. Puzzle. And this guy, don't know if you're into memes or not, but I certainly recognize this face. And here we have some... You guessed it, wolves. I think this was the first control net image that I saw that I was struck by. These people walking down the street, but at the same time they formed the word obey. And this one I think is one of the most striking ones that I've come across on the internet. A very iconic photo combined with a very violent scene. So how do you create this? Well, the essence of it is that you need to give the AI a text string describing what you want a picture of. So let's take this example. Here I gave the AI the text string bustling city in India in the sunset. I very often um, use the words in the sunset because usually the photos become a lot more beautiful and there seems to be a lot of data in these models with sunset photos so for some reason they always come out better. <laughs> and then besides that text string you also need to supply stable diffusion and a control net with a cookie cutter image as I call them. And uh, here I created the image here, subscribe. And I tried to shape it in a way so that it would be easier to combine this shape with buildings in a city. And look at the end result. I am very pleased with this one because it looks like pretty believable. Here is another output. Whenever you do this you can get as many outputs as you want. They take one or two or three minutes each to 
uh, make, at least on my computer and with my settings. And I'm gonna show you the settings in a moment. And you can just let it run overnight if you want to, and it will create hundreds of images for you, hundreds of variations of the same image. So how did I do this? Well, you should look at the links in the description of this video because there are a couple of guides that I used and I will not repeat every single step in them in this video because it's much easier to just copy paste the commands in there and to read the instructions. But let's go through them briefly. First, you need to install Stable Diffusion on your computer and you need to install something called Stable Diffusion Web UI, which means Stable Diffusion Web User Interface. Basically, this is a software that will start a web server on your own computer and you will be able to, via your web browser, create these cool images. And I use a Mac, so I use this guide that I will link in the description for how to install it on a Mac. Uh, if you use a PC, there are probably slightly different uh, steps you need to take and then I urge you to go Google for how to install uh, Stable Diffusion Web UI on a PC and you will find guides for that as well. But basically what you need to do is first you need to get something called Homebrew for your Mac and that is a tool to install packages via the terminal. If you don't have Homebrew, Google how to install Homebrew on a Mac and you will find a guide for that. Then when you have Homebrew installed, you can just do this command, brew, install, cmake, protobuf, rust, and so on, uh, which will install the packages you need um, that are prerequisites to run the Stable Diffusion Web UI. And then you do this command git clone the web UI uh, repo and you will get the web UI folder on your computer. Now you have the basic tool to create your images, but you need a model. And a model is a big file of several gigabytes, uh, which is basically lots and lots of photos, thousands of photos mashed together in a blob that Stable Diffusion is gonna use as its brain to create your output. And there are lots of different open source models out there and I will link a website in the description which is very useful. The website is called Civit AI and it consists of many different models that you can download for free. Uh, one model that I have used a lot when I've created images is called Absolute Reality. I tried a few different models, but the Absolute Reality one gave me the best results that were beautiful and good looking and interesting. Uh, so if you don't know where to start, I can recommend you to download the Absolute Reality model. And then uh, you just install the model. There are instructions for that in the guides that I'm linking in the description. And then after that, now we have Stable Diffusion. Now we also need the Control Net add-on. And I'm linking a guide as well for how to install that. It's not too hard. You install it by downloading a file and then activating it through the web UI. And now you can start generating images. What you first need to do is to create your own cookie cutter image, as I call them. Uh, it should be a black and white image. I usually do black on white or white on black and I don't use any grayscale tones. I'm not sure if you can use grayscale tones. Could be possible, but I haven't tried it. I usually make an image that is around 500 by 500 pixels. You don't want to make it too big because that will be straining for your computer. Uh, then you simply upload the image in the web UI under the control net tab. You make sure to select the model that you have installed. I use this one, the QR code monster model that I downloaded via the guide that I've linked in the description. And uh, what's important here is to set a good weight. Usually one is a good start. If you do more than one, like 1.2 or 1.5, uh, the control, uh, the cookie cutter image will uh, be more powerful and you will see it more clearly. But you want to strike a balance here so you can see what the image is of and not only the cookie cutter image. And uh, I usually do resize and fill here and I control mode balanced. And um, that's about it for the control net unit. Make sure also to check enable here. And then when it comes to the rest of the settings, uh, you type a string up in here uh, of what you want the image to look like. Uh, 
You can go ahead and try this one, the bustling city in India in the sunset as a starting point, just to see uh, what you get. Sampling steps, I usually leave it at 20. Sometimes I've tried higher, but I don't see much improvement. You can have the upscaler if you want to. I usually have that enabled to make the image a bit more higher resolution. Usually I set the base image at 512 by 512 and then I upscale by two. And then I use high res steps of eight or nine. I found that to be a good balance between how long it takes to generate the image and how good it looks. But please do play around if you want to. If you want several of these images generated at once, uh, you can do a batch count of more than one. For example, if you leave it overnight, you can do 100 there or something. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Then uh, you just press generate and uh, the magic will happen, hopefully. And if you don't see what you expected, for example, if you don't see the cookie cutter image, just go back, follow the guides again, make sure you didn't miss a step. Let's look at some more photos I generated. This one says hello in Swedish, hey, it's a bunch of women, faces look a bit weird and I found this to be a common thing with stable diffusion that it has a pretty hard time generating faces in a good way, uh, but sometimes you can get it to work. Uh, I urge you to try different models from that website where you can download models, some of them are better at faces than others. It's actually also possible, to my surprise, to make non-family friendly images with these tools. So you can try that as well. I won't show too many of them here for obvious reasons. Here is another one where I used the same cookie cutter image of hay and I made a town instead. Looks nice, right? I played around a bit with the Twitter logo as well, the old one and the new one. Uh, I really like this image. I think it's beautiful. And again, I used the word sunset. It's a good word to make beautiful images. Of course, I wanted to try some sunsets with my own logo. <laughs> Smiling Michael. Here are some elephants in the sunset by the sea. And uh, here is a mountain range that I think looks very beautiful. Another mountain range. Another one. And a beautiful village in Tuscany again. Another beautiful village and another one. And here we have the new Twitter logo as a village in Tuscany in the sunset. Came out pretty nice, I think. Then I wanted to see if I could use a cookie cutter shape and try to instruct it to be used in a way that I wanted. So I used the expression golden arches in the desert. And yeah, it looked pretty nice. And it kind of got my hint, I think. Pretty cool, right? Here are some more Twitter birds as villages in Tuscany. And then I was curious, can this one recreate famous faces? So I asked it to generate a fight between Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. And to do that in the shape of the Twitter bird. And yeah, it, it tried. Uh, I don't know what to say about these, they are certainly interesting and they certainly have the shape of a Twitter bird but it's not obvious that it's Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk in every image. In some of them you can kind of see it to some extent but I find them very funny. And that's it for this video. 